Services. Uh, my talk really touches on many of the things that Char and Pat and Steve and Lynn have already talked about. I'm very interested in both the idea of how to teach mechanics of searching and also trying to get people past that so where they're really thinking about concepts, decision making, evaluation, and, an and analyzing information. I prefer myself to focus on concepts. But I find that here at Berkeley, where there isn't a particular order in which students have to take classes, and when you go into a class, you're generally very unaware of what the student's skill level is, that you often do have to focus on both those mechanics and the decision, um, the decision making aspects of doing searching. And I have really been trying to find the balance between those you know, skills and drills and the you know, knowledge and understanding levels. Um, what, I have, what I have found myself doing then is focusing on two aspects of every search strategy that I teach. And one of those is trying to make sure they understand the mechanics and also trying to understand that, um, trying to get them past that to understand what kinds of decisions they're making when they're doing these kinds of searches. So for example, Students need to understand, of course, how the mechanics of the catalog, how to actually perform a search to retrieve the materials they need. But they also need to get past that to understand the differences between the kinds of catalogs available to them, what types of um, resources are available in these catalogs, which of the catalogs are going to be the most relevant for their types of searches. Another thing is looking at an actual record. You know, these, there are mechanics that you need to know where is the item located? Where am I going to find it on the shelf? Is that available to me? But what other aspects of this record can people use to get more clues about whether or not the resource is going to be relevant for their research? The subject headings, of course, the title, maybe even the number of pages, because you know, if it's a 10-page pamphlet, it might not be particularly useful for them. So making sure that they understand that there are other things that will help them make decisions about the resources excuse me, I'm talking too fast, um, making decisions about the resources is going to be as effective as teaching them how to actually locate a, an item. So, I have a couple more examples of this. Examples of concepts or ideas that you may frequently teach in class. And what I'd like you to do is think about the mechanics of it and also the decision-making aspect of it. I'm going to give you between 20 and 25 seconds to think about one of each. What I'd like you to do is on that blank piece of paper, I want you to draw two lines down the paper to make three columns. This, the first column will be where you actually put the concepts that I'm going to be showing you. The next column is for mechanics. The third column is for decision making. Like I said, you're not going to get very long to think about it. Your brain may freeze up. That's okay. You're not, you're going to, not going to be turning this in. This isn't um, going to count towards your grade. <laughs> but um, I also think that sometimes it is easier to do this if you're talking to somebody. So you can do it on your own if you prefer. Um, but if you would like to bounce your ideas off someone else, turn to the person next to them and ask them if they will be your Excuse me, be your partner. I'm just going too fast. So, all right. First, Boolean searching. You have 25 seconds to think about the mechanics of Boolean searching. What do you teach people to how to do it? And then what other concepts can they learn from this?
the four topics on the left-hand side, the two columns, this is where you will build <coughs> in your ideas. Does anyone want to volunteer? Bullion searching mechanics. Search terms, exactly. How about decision making? How do you add something versus or? How do you add something versus or? Understanding the difference between Boolean searching and anything else? Yes. How to get more relevant, precise, and Yeah, how exactly. How to really manipulate your searches so you can pull that out the right types of topics. What is Venn diagrams? Venn diagrams is a really good way. I, I was going to do that, but I just said not have the time. <laughs> but yeah. How about citing sources? The mechanics of it. Knowing the formats, understanding the different disciplines have different kinds of formats. What about the, the decision making process, the analysis part of it? Knowing what to cite. Absolutely. Something's common knowledge, uh, what it doesn't say, what it does. And understanding the legal ramifications, understanding what plagiarism is, and the, the purpose of citation. What, letting people track what, um, what, what you've done. Call numbers. Formats again. Formats, yeah, absolutely. Physically locating things on the shelf. The graph. Using the graph to show what they're showing. Oh, okay. Okay. And uh, how about the decision making? The fact that finding relevant call numbers helps you to be able to browse mm -hmm. in case you can't find the things you want by search. Right. Knowing things that are things are shelved by subject is really important and, and, and also the fact that there are different kinds of organizational schemes in the library. And then article databases. Mechanics? I uh, just put them in the earth and have to think about what this is going to make there. Absolutely. And how about the decision making aspect of it? Which one to do? Right. Choosing which one and also understanding that there are just there are databases unique to their own discipline and uh, and, and the idea that uh, information in general is organized into disciplines. So you can see that everything that you do has both this sort of technical, this is how you do it type of thing and also has another aspect of it too that's more conceptual. And it is those conceptual things that do tend to be transferable. And of course, the things that we're most interested in, as Lynn said, are it's more interesting to the students. But unfortunately, we often have to focus on those mechanics too. So I am out of time. Oh. Um, if, that was, <laughs> if that was an effective active learning technique, I hopefully you learned a little bit more from each other than you did from me. So we'll 